Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren from Guthrie and Ganny and in this video I'll be sharing with you the recording of the live question and answer session that I did on the Instagram platform on Monday the 2nd of November. So I've got even more new fabrics to be showing you this week. They're just coming in thick and fast every week at the moment and I've got all of your questions ready as well, asking for help and advice on your sewing projects and then looking for recommendations. So there's lots of pattern and fabric pairings and suggestions as usual lots of inspiration for your projects so hopefully you'll learn lots and get some nice ideas as well if you are watching here on youtube then and you would like to ask a question that i cover in a future session or you've got anything to add or anything like that then please do just leave a comment below i will switch over to the live recording now and you'll just see me answer some of the questions that come in live and like read out the comments that are live as well just so you've got a bit more context about what's going on so i'll see you very shortly good evening everyone hello 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 here for another live tonight showing you lots of lovely new fabrics even more new fabrics this week for you they're just coming in every week at the moment lots of new fabrics so i'll show you some of them as well and I've also got your questions ready too. So I'll be covering them tonight. So it's lovely to see you all. Thanks for joining. And I hope you've all had a lovely weekend. Ready for October. Um, so yeah, hi. Uh, so yeah, if you're just joining out, I do have even more new fabrics to show you tonight. So I'm going to cover them first of all. I'm also going to give you some Sewing Society kit clues because it's just a couple of days until our next kits are released which is very exciting and then I'll be answering all of your questions as well and if you do have any questions or anything as I'm chatting along then please feel free to ask and I'll try and keep up sometimes I don't always know the answer off the top of my head but um yeah if I do know obviously I can answer it and if I don't then you can send me it and I'll look I'll look into it for next week um hello from far away in exotic Coventry well, I hope you're having a lovely time there in Coventry and in Essex. Um, and from Canada. Lovely, thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, it's like, to you know, it's just totally dark and like wet and miserable out here now. Long gone are the days of the light outside. I love your blouse, thank you. Um, this is the Archer, the Green Line Archer, which we had as a kit. Was that this year? I think it was. Um, somebody else in Coventry. Maybe you could like wave to each other out the window. Um, hello from Naples in Florida. Thank you for joining us all the way in Florida. I bet it's nice and sunny there. Um, not dark and wet like it is here. Is someone else from Coventry? The Co Coventry is well represented tonight. Well done, everyone. Um, okay, so I'm going to start showing you some of the new fabrics and these are, yeah, I'm just thinking, um, these are new ones that are even new since I did the new fat, the end of the month new fabric roundup last week. Um, so that's on the YouTube channel and on the blog now, so you can see lots of new fabrics there as well. Um, but these are even more new ones. Um, and we do have another batch of new ones as well, which will go online this week at some point. A lot of them are ex-designer ones. They're really nice. Um, they came in last week. So yeah, we'll get Hannah will get all the listings done for them this week. So there'll be even more new things and then I can show you them next week. We're, where's everyone else tonight? We've got Surrey, hi Sue, and Mid Wales and Kings Norton, you just up the road. Um, us Coventry folk are taking over the world, I know. Hello from Mosley, oh hi. <laughs> um, and Her Hertford, Tully, Tullybody in New Zealand, in Corfu, you're on holiday. Lucky you. Hope you're having a lovely time. In Cape Town. So I think we're, I think we've definitely got like world domination there, including Coventry. Thanks everyone. Uh, somebody else in South Africa, in Cornwall, Oxfordshire, Southampton. Um, the East Coast of Canada. Lovely. Um, and Bristol and Bath and Northumberland. I love hearing where everyone's from. From there. Yep, we're stretching the, the the length and breadth of the UK, certainly there. Um, Soggy Sully Hull, yeah, I know, I know the feeling. Bristol too, Pontefract, Edinburgh, Tamworth. Lovely, thanks everyone. Thank you for joining me wherever you are. Was in Birmingham today for work and spotted 
three sewing society makes no way just like on random people that's so funny what were they oh norway good we've got scandinavia in there as well someone else from cornwall fife way west of scotland and it was sunny today well there you go october and it's sunny in the west of scotland who knew Edgebast in Toronto, the Isle of Man, Tamworth in Germany, lovely. Um, so we've had some more of the new Fabric Godmother prints come in. I've brought a couple of them over to show you here. They're both uh, both a viscose crepe, but they're like slightly different textures. So I'll explain the difference between the two. Um, this one here is, let me just read out the name for you, it's the Leone Jade Viscose Crepe. Um, so it's 100% viscose and I would say that this is the this is the type of viscose crepe that's got, it's, it's textured so it's not like totally flat and smooth like a plain weave viscose, but the texture of it's like a little bit more, I guess like subtle, I mean, like arguably like a little bit more softer, but I love the blue that pops out of this one, it's really nice. So it's like a dark, dark navy background, then with a lovely sort of foresty green and then these really bright blue ones as well. So I think that would be gorgeous for a nice autumnal dress, it's really lovely. Um, so, so yeah, we've got that one. And then this other one, which is also a viscose crepe, but it's like the texture's a bit different, it's almost like it's a bit more textured really in a way. Um, so I'll, I'll pull that one out to show you. I think this is very autumnal as well. I was thinking this would make a really gorgeous um, True by Shelby. Um, I think it would be really nice in that, lovely autumnal shades in that one. And this is the Elsie Floral Black Viscose Crepe. Um, so yeah, the background in that one is black. Um, and then, yeah, it's just like the texture of it's a bit more sort of pronounced. Um, but still still really like drapey and floaty and all of that sort of thing. Um, so so yeah, we've got got those ones. And then we've also got a colourway of one that we've had before that was popular last year because I'd made a little fibre mood blouse in it. Um, and this one is also a viscose crepe, but it's like that more subtle viscose crepe texture one. So this is the Ziggy Jade and it's Echo Vero viscose. So... Um, oh, it's kind of sliding down the roll a little bit. Um, so, so yeah, a nice, I feel like this is maybe like a little bit more festive. Um, so yeah, that's another really lovely one there. Um, it was, the, I think it was the Air, Airmine, Fibre Mood Airmine blouse that I made out of the, the cream colourway of that one last year. Um, so yeah, I'll probably be looking at the pictures of that soon to show you again. Um, and then we've had a few colourways of this one here, which is really like a little bit more unusual. I think it's really cool though. Um, yeah, the jade one is really nice. Um, this is the Coca Navy Big Spots textured cotton fabric. So it's Japanese cotton, so it's like really high quality. It does make it a bit more expensive because generally stuff that comes from Japan tends to be a bit more expensive. Um, but it's got this sort of like spot woven into it. Oh, it's gonna do that weird uh, contrast thing with the lighting again. Um, I'll try not to hold it too close to my face. Um, can, it's almost like a little bit sheer. Can you see that? I'm gonna try and get my face out, out of the screen so I can show you. Um, I think it would make a, like more of a sort of dressy little top or blouse. It would be really lovely. Um, and it comes in a few different colorways. That one was the navy. Then it also comes in a sort of more like a denimy blue probably like a little bit darker than my blouse but yeah more like a denim blue and then it comes in a black as well and um, so I think that would be nice maybe if you wanted to make something that was a little bit more dressy and um, I saw a Lusk entire bag an archer shirt and a green hovia that is on, on the same person or different people that is so cool I love that um so so yeah that's the coke up big spots and then we have also had in preparation for a, a nice big chunky order of the mind maker Thelma fabrics coming back again. Um, we have got some of this lovely um, sh sh sherling. Oh God, this isn't the right tag. I've not got the proper name. It's like the kind of fleecy sort of sherling fabric um, that I used to line my grain line tamarack that I made last year. But it's, yeah, it's really nice for like lining a little gilet or like a little jacket. Um, so yeah, that is, that is back available again. We do have it on a big roll literally the size of me the roll though hence I just thought I'd bring a little bit of a bowl over um hi Lauren are the Darren I think there's maybe a typo there the Ziggy Prince black or navy um I think the little stars in that one 
they're quite small. It's kind of hard to tell. It might depend what light you're looking at it in. I'm going to say midnight because that kind of covers both bases. Um, the sound's gone or is it just me here too? Oh. Hello, part two of the live here on Monday the 2nd of October. Um, the sound cut off in my last one, so I'm really hoping that the sound works now. Let's just see if some people are joining us live and can you hear me now? Is the sound back? I'm really hoping the sound is back because I don't actually know what to do if it's not. <laughs> okay, good, someone's saying the sound's back. I literally have no idea what happened there. I'm gonna blame it on some kind of weird Instagram glitch because I didn't like touch anything on my phone. So <laughs> I'm not sure what happened, um, but I'm glad you can hear now. So that is wonderful. Um, I'm feeling like I'm not sure what the last thing I said was that you could actually hear. Uh, if anybody was listening to the last part of it and uh, you can remember the last thing that you heard, <laughs> feel free to give me a pointer. Um, I thought it was because we got sewing society clues. Now that would be cryptic, wouldn't it? Uh, me giving you the clues without sound also. That would be like a next level of crypticness. Um, I blame the weather, yes, possibly. Um, the gremlins, it's true. The thunder, indeed. The fur type fabric, yeah. Um, so yeah, the Mind the Maker. So the Mind the Maker Thelma quilted fabric, that delivery is coming in hopefully in the next couple of weeks or so. We've got the matching bindings and just the plain fabric coming as well. So then um, I, I've, we've got some more of this, which is what I used to line the green line tamarack that I made last year using the same fabric. So, um, so yeah, that is back again. The, the creamy fleecy fabric and then the sound cut out. Okay, um, so so yeah, this is this is back again. Um, it was popular last year. We do don't, don't worry that there's a little uh, bowl of it. There is a big mass of roll, but it's literally the size of me the roll. So um, yeah, I just thought I'd bring over a little bowl. Okay, so yeah, the next on my list of new things to show you um, were these really lovely stripy ones they come in three colors this is cranberry this one here is denim mm -hmm. denim and then this one is the forest the colors in them are really nice so on the back it's like a loop back but it's brushed so normally normally like fleecy back brush back sweatshirting fabric is um, is like loop back that's brushed but it's, I feel like the loop back is still quite pronounced in this one but it feels really like sort of soft and fluffy it's lovely um, and nice sort of weight and thickness it's not hugely stretchy so it would definitely be better for things that are like more sort of looser fitting and kind of oversized but lovely for a hoodie or a jumper um, and um, Hannah, who works in the shop, is using it to make a Merchant and Mill Sydney, which I'm looking forward to seeing. So some really lovely colours in that one. What was the pattern you used for the padded coat? I used the Grain Line Tamarack. Um, but I'm going to do, when they come in, I'm going to do like a video and a blog post all about it. Because I do still get quite a lot of questions about that coat that I made. Because I made some adaptions. Um, so I'm going to do almost like a, a blog post and video that kind of covers all the FAQs that I get about that, that coat. And that, then I'll suggest some other things that you could use to make with it as well. Um, okay, so that is that one. And then we've had some like new, really cute sort of novelty ones. Calling all dog lovers and animal lovers out there. This one here, very cute. My particular favourite is the meerkat here. Look how cute that is. Um, and it comes in three different colourways. So this one is the light olive zoo parade, cotton French terry fabric. Um, so this one, this one is a French terry, so it's not brushed on the back. So it's probably like a bit lighter weight. Um, and, and yeah, it's just really nice with these sort of sketchy animals on it. So three different colourways of that one. And then this one, very cute. Look at the little sausage dogs. And this comes in another colourway as well. And um, this is sausage dogs on light grey fleece back sweatshirting fabric. So this one does have the kind of brushed soft sort of fleecy backing to it. And um, it's very cute. Um, can you please explain the hood addition to the tamarack when you do the video? Definitely, it's on my list. Um, and then final one for dog lovers. Look how cute this one is. It's got various different types of dogs on it. 
here can you see them all um, and then this one is also like a fleecy back sweatshirting but I would say it's pretty lightweight I've probably got more of a weight of a French terry but the back is sort of brushed so it's like a little bit fleecy and um, so so yeah this one here what's this one called I actually I'll read the name out for you they are all in the just arrived section anyway it's the party woof cotton fleece back sweatshirting fabric um because we just thought that they kind of looked like they were having fun and at a party because they all were sort of like smart with their little collars on and it says woof as well so hence the name party woof and then oh i've got a bit of fabric avalanche happening here and um, then a little bit more subtle now after the novelties we've had a few spotty ones and this one's a navy and then i think we've got like a pink and a kind of sagey greeny one as well this is just navy spotty cotton jersey fabric so it's just like a kind of classic cotton t-shirt weight jersey fabric so nice for sort of basics maybe like some long sleeve tops or maybe like vests that you might layer underneath other things so just yeah like a nice sort of basic to have and then another one that I think is like a really nice basic too is this really kind of fine stripe one here. This particular colourway is navy, so it's navy fine stripe cotton jersey fabric, but it does come in other colourways as well. So again, it's just like a classic t-shirt weight. I think the stripes in this are definitely small enough that you do not need to pattern match it. So don't worry about trying to pattern match these little stripes. I think you'd probably make yourself go cross-eyed if you did that. I think they're narrow enough that you wouldn't need to worry about it. But yeah, just another sort of nice classic basic to have. And then this one here also comes in like a bluey colourway as well. It's really nice. Feels super soft because it is a mix of bamboo and cotton. So it's 68 bamboo and 28% cotton and then 2% elastine. So it's the Plum Ditsy Flowers Bamboo Cotton Jersey Fabric. Now, because it's got bamboo in it, it makes it floppier. So if I hold a little bit out of it, then you'll see that it's just, it's just got like a little bit more floppiness and drape. So probably not as much like drape and swish as like a tensile or a medal jersey, but definitely more than a, than a cotton, just a cotton one. So it's just got like a little bit more sort of movement in it, but really lovely and stretchy and nice and comfy too. And then finally, I've got this one, which does come in a couple of colourways as well. The colours in this are beautiful. It's like a really bright sort of magenta colour and then really lovely teals as well. I love the, the colour combo in this one. It's the Flower Sketchbook on Dusky Rose Cotton Jersey Fabric. So again, it's cotton um, with elastane. So that classic sort of t-shirt weight. So nice for t-shirts and long sleeve tops. Um, and yeah, just some really beautiful colours in there. Um, spotty jersey for Tilly and the Buttons Lotta would be ace. I've only ever made it in woven, so it would be cool to try the jersey version. Yeah, I love the fabric. Dark purple one would be nice for a season of East Spring top. Yeah, it's really lovely. Um, so, so yeah, I think that actually the last new things that I was going to show you, I feel like I've got an eyelash in my eye, is ho hopefully I'm not going to like, um, feel like it's maybe a bit too soon for anyone, but you know, sometimes you have to just get going with these things. I've got some Liberty Christmas fabric. It is October after all. Um, there's four different prints. They're really nice. Um, this one here is the... Liberty 12 Days of Christmas. So they're all on tan alone. The colours in this one are really nice. So it's a navy background. And then, yeah, you can sort of see it's got that kind of classic um, Liberty kind of repeat in it. But when you look closely, it does have all of the things of the 12 Days of Christmas. So that's fun. And then we've got three different colourways of the classic Betsy print, but they've sort of Christmasified it with little metallic stars. So I'll try and bring them all over to show you oh, together. This is them here. Um, so it is, it's called Betsy Star and then it just comes in three colourways. But you can see, I wonder if the light's going to pick it up. These little stars here are sort of metallic. So yeah, they just kind of catch the light and sparkle very nicely. So obviously more of a sort of lighter, brighter one here. This one's like a kind of more sort of greeny one, a darker one. And then that one's got a navy, navy background. So, I mean, I think they're nice. They're not like in your face Christmas if you're looking for something maybe like a little bit more subtle. I love the fabric, the 12 days of Christmas. That'd be nice for a lovely top. What is the fabric called again? 
I think it's just called Liberty 12 Days of Christmas. Um, yeah, Liberty 12 Days of Christmas tan -a -lot. Um, and these are online, they're in the Just Arrive section, so they should be fairly easy to find. I have been making Christmas hoodies this weekend, that is very prepared of you, well done. Um, never too early for Liberty, well that's what I think, you can just have Liberty any time of year. I actually excitingly saw the spring summer collection um, for Liberty today for next year and it's really nice. Um, so that's coming later. Is the Betsy a, a Tanalon? Yeah, they all are. They're all Tanalon, these ones, yeah. Um, so they're, they're like the same width as like normal Tanalon and yeah, same feel and everything, just yeah, Christmassy prints. Um, okay, so, and then I couldn't actually, the last one I wanted to show you, I can't remember if I'd shown you before or not, but I just, I think it's really cool. So I just wanted to, I just wanted to show you again. Um, is this denim, which has got, oh, the light's gonna go weird again, which has got this really cool velvet stripe in it. And I think that's so nice. I think for a lovely pair of trousers, that would look really cool. It's kind of like smart jeans. Is the velvet stripe, velvet stripe stretch denim fabric. Um, so, so yeah, I think that's really cool. And I just wanted to show you again, but yeah, the light's gonna do that weird thing if my face is in it. Here we go, try and show you that way. This, the, the camera on the, this phone that I used to do the live really doesn't like contrast of navy in my face. Um, I'm wearing my new Liberty Gilbert now, that sounds nice. Oh, I love this denim, what would you make with it? I think you could make, um, I think, kind of like sort of chino style trousers, I think would be nice, like the sashes, something like that, the, the closet core sashes would be nice. I'm trying to think if you could make, would you make ginger jeans with it? I'm not sure it's like, it probably feels like a little bit thinner than denim that I've used to make ginger jeans before. I'm not sure it's quite, no, it probably would just be about stretchy. I've definitely made the ginger jeans out of stretchier denim than this before, but it does have stretch, like it's got elastane in it. Um, it's got, it's got 2% elastane in it. Off the top of my head, hmm, how much stretch has it got? Maybe only got about 10% stretch though. Um, flared leg lander pants, yeah. You might need to, the lander pants is drafted for, for non-stretch fabric. So there's maybe like a little fitting adjustment there you could do, but given that it's not that stretchy, I think it would probably be fine just to like alter the seam allowances a little bit and it would be okay. Could you make an A-line skirt with it? Yeah, I think you could. Could you make a dress out of the velvet stripe or too heavy? I think if it's more like a kind of pinafore sort of style dress that you'd maybe wear with like a long sleeve top underneath, I think that could be nice, that could work. Um, I, yeah, it's just really unusual, it's really quick, which is why I wanted to show you again. Um, okay, so yeah, that was all of the, let me check, that was all of the new things I wanted to show you. So I'll try and get through some of the questions that you've sent in beforehand. So the first one was, I bought your rust ditzy leopard stretch, viscose to make an elasticated skirt. It's fab, but I hemmed it flat and now when I'm wearing it, it sticks out slightly at the hem. I've now bought your plum digi floral viscose to make another. Do you have any tips? to make sure the hem hangs nicely. So I think perhaps what might have happened is that because it's got a little bit of elastane in it, potentially maybe it's like you've, maybe you've inadvertently stretched it as you've been hemming it, potentially. Um, or maybe if the hem is too deep, sometimes that can affect things as well. It depends on the shape of the side seam. Like if it's just a kind of straight up and down, then you know, the he you're just gonna be turning the hem up. but. If it's, if it's got like any shaping on it, like if it's a bit more, um, if it's a bit more A-line or sort of shaped and you're turning fabric into that, then you need to think about like, as you turn it, as you turn the hem up, you're turning it up into a circumference that's smaller than what it is, then you have to sort of change the shaping at the bottom of the hem. Just wondering if maybe something's happened there as well. But what, what, what I quite often do with viscose is if I'm hemming it, if it's like quite a narrow hem, is that I'll sew a line of like stay stitching in the fabric. So just to like half a centimetre away from the raw edge, I'll put like a long stitch length on the machine. I just sew all the way around and then I'll use that as a pressing guide. So then I just press it back to where the st that stitching line is and then that stitching line kind of acts like stay stitching as well to stop it stretching out. And then I'll just press it back again as narrow as I can um, and then stitch it and then press it again. So like making sure you have given it a really good press after you've hemmed it too can help just make sure it sits a little bit flat. So um, 
I hope that that helps. Um, sorry, no, I'm not asking about fabric, but I love your eyeshadow. What brand is it, please? People, people actually ask me this quite a lot. Um, and I feel like maybe I should be on like some kind of commission or something. <laughs> it's always Charlotte Tilbury ones that I use. Um, I have like various different ones. I can't remember like the exact shape, shade of it. I've got like a palette thing that I use. Um, and then I did recently buy like a kind of cre the cream one that's in a little pot. Um, but but yeah, Charlotte Tilbury. Um, the blank of flight suit. Yeah, for the denim, that'd be cool. Um, any ideas for a jacket pattern for my fur backed cord? Not the Ilford, maybe a shawl collar, no buttons, maybe poppered. No, no, I, not off the top of my head. I'd need to kind of have a little look on the fold line, have a look around for some suggestions for that one. Um, but I'll add it to my list for next week. Um, okay, so the next question was what type of binding is best to use with the fleece back tartan cord so i should have brought this one over and um, that is this fabric here i would say like the main thing is is that you just want to make sure it's wide enough i feel like as long as it's out of um just like whether you're making it yourself or i guess you could use like a pre-made poly cotton one um but I think the key is just making sure it's wide enough just so that it's going to get round that nice and easily and just make it a bit easier for you to stitch as well. Um, but any sort of light to medium weight cotton, I think would be good to, to make some binding with. Um, is it the Charlotte Tilbury Uptown Girl palette? I'm afraid I have no idea. It was actually a Christmas present. Um, so I'd, I'm not sure. I'm um, sorry. I could have, if you, if you send me a message about it, it'll then... I'll try and take a picture of it and send you the thing, the back, the thing back of it. Um, sorry for joining late, no props. What is your shirt pattern, please? It's the Grain Line Archer. Merchant and Mills have a new shawl collar jacket. Okay, that sounds interesting. Thanks for the suggestion. Um, okay, the next one was, I've made the toaster version too and I found that it seemed to stick out at the back. Do you know why? Um, so I was having a think of that. I mean, the toaster version too is quite boxy. Like I would say generally it's kind of, like quite loose and boxy, like round about the sort of waist. But I'm wondering maybe if it was sticking out. I was also presuming that it was sticking out of the back hem as opposed to the neckline. So sorry if I've got the wrong end of the stick of the question here. But I was wondering maybe if it's sticking out a lot at the back, maybe it's kind of pulling up because there's not enough length in the back. Like maybe you need a sort of rounded shoulder adjustment just to add a bit more length in the armhole here. Um, I'd actually been looking out the, the, um, at the Fit for Real People book because there was another question about altering things here. Um, so, it would, you know, it would be like something, something along those lines um, there that you would want to do. You just like adding sort of length to the centre back. Um, that, would, that would be my sort of suggestion to, to maybe experiment with. Um, Merchant and Mills Sansa has a shawl collar. Lovely. Okay, so it's the Merchant and Mills Sansa. Okay, the next one was why, uh, sorry, how would I shorten the sleeves in the Olia? I need to be, take about four centimetres, take off about four centimetres and make them narrower. So you need to get that really weird looking pattern piece because it's got that front yoke section in it and then it's got the whole sleeve like attached as well. And what I would suggest doing is, I can't actually remember where the grain line is on that, on that pattern piece now, but you need to make sure that the grain line is like going down the sleeve. And then you need to draw a line that is at 90 degrees to that grain line. And I would probably do it like maybe about three quarters of the way down. Draw a line that's at 90 degrees to the grain line and then cut out your four centimetres, like take it out. So that's you shortened it. Um, and then, then you can just narrow it equally at the edges of the sleeve as well. Then you'd obviously need to um, make your cuff a bit shorter as well. Um, if you were doing that too. Um, what was the fitting book, please? It is that one. Is that shirt pattern good for lightweight linen fabric? Um, as in this one, yes. The Green Line Archer, yes. Um, I'll just hold the book up for a bit um, so that everybody can see what it's like. Um, hi, I'm Sharon. Hi, Sharon. I'm a big fan. Lovely. Thank you for watching. Um, okay, the next one was, how do you use one pattern to make multiple sizes without reprinting the PDF? Um, so that would be by tracing. You could either use like dots and cross dressmakers tracing paper, which we sell by the half meter. Um, and so you could do that or you could use um, Swedish tracing paper. 
um, or if you were desperate and you didn't want to wait until those things came to you if you were ordering them then you could use just some baking parchment to trace it the only thing I would like really suggest that you weigh up is that if you've got a PDF pattern and you don't want to get it printed multiple times but you do want multiple sizes is I think you really need to weigh up the amount of time that it would take you to trace it versus the convenience of just getting it printed again um, and you know if you've got if you've got you know if you if you don't mind spending the time to do that and you don't mind tracing then you know go for it um, I guess maybe it's just because I'm like generally quite busy and I don't always have like a huge amount of time to sew I just feel like I don't really have time to trace anymore I was totally a tracer in the past like I would trace everything um, or I would like be folding patterns back to try and keep all the sizes but I don't know I just kind of lost patience for it I guess over the years and I think if you've got the PDF file it's just generally like a bit more quick or more convenient to just get it reprinted again and um, Swedish tracing paper is so lovely to mark and use um, any tips for sewing with corduroy sewing pressing and cutting the fabric yeah I shared some of that last week as well and um, just make sure that the, that the nap is going down the way and um, try to press it from the back if you can so that you don't flatten the, the sort of pile on and if you are pressing from the front it's good to use another scrap of the fabric so that you've got like the right side facing the right side so you can make a little bit of a pressing cloth out of some off cuts um, and press it from the right side with that way cutting it or just just go for it i don't think as long as the as long as the nap's the right way um i don't see there's any anything special or anything you do just just go for it and um, i use large size baking parchment from costco catering rolls are wider and it's very cost effective as i often have to make a couple of twelves of different sizes that sounds useful. Um, I'm making my first archer this week. That's exciting. I love the archer. Got loads of them. Um, okay, the next one was, are there any situations where you wouldn't recommend using Maraflex with jersey slash knits? Generally, no. Like, I think you can use it. The only sort of caution that I would give you is that because you can use just a regular straight stitch with Maraflex thread on stretchy fabric, is that if you're making something that's got quite a tight fitting neck back like a quite maybe like a turtleneck or like just a high necked t-shirt with a neck band is that you might still have to use a stretch stitch with the Maraflex as well because I have sewn I can't remember what pattern it was now but I have sewn quite a closely fitting turtleneck pattern before with Maraflex on a straight stitch and found that basically I couldn't get it over my head. Um, but then when I sewed it with a stretch stitch in the Maraflex thread, then I could get it over my head and it was just because it was very tight fitting. So that's probably the only thing I would sort of suggest to watch out for. Um, okay, the next one was, I made a twelve for the Josephine dress, but the front neckline seems to rise up and I have to keep pulling it down. Any advice on how to rectify this or what might be the cause? Someone suggested round back adjustment, but I'm not sure how to do this on raglan sleeves. So yeah, that's what I'd got this book out to show you so um it's got one suggestion here so it's got see how it's just kind of like creating a little hinge in the back bodice there and then just making a little bit of extra length here like the reason it's pulling back is probably because there's just not enough fabric to balance it out in the back so there's that one and it does say at the bottom we haven't found it necessary to alter the sleeve as well in the raglan styles we've used so you're so yeah you're not because you're hinging at the seam where it joins to the sleeve you're not having to alter the the, the sleeve at all and then that is that this is like a similar thing very round back in other styles that's like a similar thing but just more so it looks like they're doing it a little bit further down uh, can you see the difference between the two that was the other one and that was this one here so that's something to try but then it might also just be that maybe it is okay at the back, but it's actually the front. You need to scoop down a little bit lower, in which case you'd have to alter the binding a bit. Um, but it might be that maybe maybe you have to maybe maybe it is okay at the back, and it just needs to be lowered at the front. So that's another another possibility as well um, to try. Okay, the next one was the best way to store fabric. I personally store mine like kind of rolled up. I sort of fold it and then roll it into little kind of bundles. And then I, I keep it in a cupboard so that I can sort of see like a little rolled up bit of all the fabric. So I, I tend not to keep it like flat. Um, so that, that's, that's how I store mine. Um, 
and it might be that you maybe want to put some sort of like anti-moth thing in there as well. Um, I've got those little kind of wooden balls before, like wooden circular discs that you can sort of intersperse in there too, maybe just in case, especially if you've got lots of natural fibres and wool in your stash. Um, but I know a lot of people like kind of keep track of what length um, each of their fabrics are and what the composition is and the width and all of that sort of thing, just so it's a bit easier to reference rather than having to like pull bits of fabric out if you... So you can kind of see what you've got, but then you've got some other kind of record of kind of keeping track of what you've got in there. Um, okay, the next one was, I'm planning to make the Itch to Stitch Bainbridge pullover with the Teddy Fleece fabric, but I've just realised that the pattern says to use fabric with minimal stretch. Do you think the Teddy Fleece would be okay, given that it has 30% one-way stretch? So I had a little look at this pattern. It's really nice. It's got, got a seam across the front and then like a kind of button. I think it was either buttons or studs like neckline. I think it might have darts as well, pockets. The only thing that I would say about using this for it is that this fabric is quite floppy. Like it, not only is it stretchy, but it does like move around quite a lot as well. And I don't know whether maybe it might almost like hang a little bit funny in those seams. That was the only other thing that I was potentially thinking with that one. Um, I mean, in saying that it does stretch like that way as opposed to like up and down the way. So maybe it would be okay. My other suggestions for that pattern were this one here, which is the cotton double fleece fabric. It's 100% cotton. Um, this particular colorway is a sea glass, but we do have some other colorways as well. And it's just got a bit more structure to it. It does have a bit of stretch, but not loads. Um, and I thought that would be nice for that style of garment as well. Um, and then we do also have this one here which comes in lots of colorways this particular one's obviously like a sort of white ivory color um it's the snuggly fleece back organic cotton sweatshirting and it's quite heavy and sort of dense um and i think that would like hold the shape and structure of that garment really nicely just because it is so thick and it's it's not particularly stretchy and um, so i think that one would be good for it as well um so, I mean, I don't think it would be like terrible if you use the Terry one. I don't know. It just might not come out entirely how you're like anticipating it to. Um, okay, let me see. If there's been quite a lot of comments and questions here. So I'm going to try and catch up on some of them. Um, I saw, Shaq, where you can cut three sizes bigger and then snip the edges and fold the pattern back. Then you have three size options. Oh, that's good. Um, I trace small pattern pieces or cut pieces that are easy to amend short sleeves. Sorry, Lauren, I forgot to ask you that already. That's okay. Thanks for helping me choose a shirt pattern last week. I chose the Natalie by Seamwork. Lovely. Um, who wrote the book that you just showed? Um, it is Palmer and... Patty Palmer and Marta Alto. Um, do you have any tips, please, on making the Josephine dress without the triangle cut out at the front? Um, I think you would have to basically try and almost sort of like straighten out that pattern piece there. Because it kind of angles out to the side, doesn't it? So I think you need to, you need to like just change the shape of it a little bit so that the seam came straight up. And then I wonder if you can maybe actually then just cut it on the fold then. Um... Did you reduce the width on the sleeves of your Archer shirt? No, no amendments. It's a straight size. I think it's a size four. Do you have any tips, please? And oh, I redid that one. Lauren, if I was making a knit, knit shirt style pattern, e.g. the linden, out of one of the jumper knit type fabrics, how would I do the neckline? Does it work if you make a neckband or would it go floppy? Um, a dip a what what knit type fabrics do you mean? It should be fitting. Um, I changed the Josephine neckline and just copied a neckline from another top I already had and it worked. Oh, that's good. Is it easy to search the Maniflex colour threads you stock for fabrics I already have? I know they pop up automatically when buying fabric from you. Probably what's best to do is if you can send a picture of us in like really good lighting, like daylight, um, if you can email us a picture and then we could send you some suggestions. Um, of colour matches. What is on your cutting table at the moment? 
Um, I am making a skirt out of some fabric that like a mesh embroidered fabric that we have in the shop, which is going to be part of like a blog post, hopefully next week. Um, you've frozen now. Oh no, I'm sorry. Have I frozen for anyone else? Do you have a look at a sewing pattern that I mentioned last did you have a look at a sewing pattern? I'm sorry, I didn't. You'd have to send me a direct message and then I'll remember to do it. I'm just about to start adding my neck binding to the Josephine dress. Wish me luck. Good luck. Take your time, you'll be fine. Can you suggest any fabric for the Dean Doe Magnolia for a winter wedding? Have a look at some of the Fabric Godmother ones. I think they'd be beautiful. Palmer and Pletch fit books are the best and easy to follow, really easy to follow. Is sizing in the archer accurate? I'd say so. Um, okay, good. It's not frozen for anyone else. Hopefully it was maybe an, an internet glitch um, on your side. Okay, so the next question was, do you have any recommendations for the True Bice Nico dress? So this is like a fitted sort of turtleneck, which you can make as a long sleeve top or you can make it as a dress as well. Um, this, this one I think would be good for the dress version because it's quite thick and even when you stretch it, it still doesn't really become like see-through or anything. I think it's got a really nice texture to it. So this one is the Honey Mustard Variated Rib Knit Fabric um, and it's a viscose polyester mix um, as opposed to this kind of one, which I think would be really good for the long sleeve top version, but I feel like it would just be a bit thin for the dress. Um, because when you stretch it, it, you can just sort of see through it a little bit more. I don't know if I can, how easy it would be to show you that. Um, I mean, maybe if you're wearing, if you were wearing over leggings, then it might be okay. Um, this one's the charcoal linear rib knit jersey fabric, which is a cotton polyester mix. Um, okay, the next one was recommendations for the heyday dungarees for autumn winter. I would say cord would be really nice. We've got some of this lovely thick thick cord thanks chunky midnight chunky cotton corduroy fabrics 100% cotton does come in other colorways as well and um, fabric for the stasia dress some of those ones that i showed earlier i think would be good that one would be really nice for the stasia that was the cotton bamboo plum ditzy flowers which also comes in a blue as well um, and then the other one that i picked out for the stasia is this one here which is the petal bloom on navy viscose jersey fabric and this comes in another color way too. Um, I think they'd be really nice for the Stasia. Um, the next one was, I wanted to make a mashup of the By Hand London Flora bodice and the By Hand London Anna skirt. I've done a small bust adjustment in the bodice, which fits nicely, but now I've found that the bodice and the skirt don't fit together. The bodice is narrower than the skirt. Maybe this was caused by the small bust adjustment. Yeah, it would have been. So they don't match up at the centre back where the zip will go. Is there anything I can do to save it? So I think probably what you just need to do is alter your seam allowances on the back skirt. If it's if it's at the back where it doesn't fit, um, then you just need to alter the seam allowances. The little panels, the the Anna skirt. Um, so so if you just did like an even like even it out and do a bigger seam allowance, it'll bring like the whole thing in, sort of make it fit. And you can just merge the seam allowance back out to like a normal, uh, like your regular seam allowance that you had anyway. Um, okay, the next one was approximately how much fabric needed to make five meters of five centimeter wide bias binding. So uh, I googled this and I got some like calculator thing, which is actually in inches and inches. Yeah. Um, so I did some further Googling and converted that to inches. And basically to cut a long story short, I did some maths and it's about half a meter that you need. Um, so if you use half a meter of fabric and make continuous bias binding, then you should have enough. Um, okay, the next one was structured fabric with no drape. I'm presuming maybe you already have it. I'd like to make a Christmas dress. Do you have any pattern ideas, please? Um, the cashmere Upton looks nice. Um, in quite structured fabric. And then also, so a was it last year? Was it the year before? If you see, if you search Chris, festive, festive Christmas window display on the website and then look at the blog results, you'll see a Christmas window display that we did, as I said, I can't remember whether it was last year or two years ago now. And we had the Jennifer Lauren handmade Asteria dress and the By Hand London Anna dress both in like a, a jacquard sort of brocade type fabric and um, which is quite structured and um, it looks quite nice so that might give you an idea of what it would look like as well um okay the next one was a stretchy thick and comfortable french terry for a stella hoodie most of the french well really all of the french terries that i've got i wouldn't say are thick and um, 
they are all comfortable. Um, but th this one, this one is probably a bit thicker just because it's got that brushed backing to it. That was the one I showed at the beginning, um, which has three different colorways in it. This one's the cranberry one and it's the striped fleecy look back cotton. But the other, my other suggestion that I pulled out for the Stella, which I think would be lovely, is this one here, um, which is the muted mauve alpine fur backed sweatshirting fabric. And it's got a really lovely, quite a short pile sort of fur in the back. And I honestly think that would feel so cozy and luxurious, especially in a, a Stella hoodie. So that was my suggestion for that one. Um, then the next one was, I have one and a half meters of fabric left after making the Mitchell trousers. Do you have a pattern recommendation for the leftover fabric? The Silver Ava skirt would be nice, just like a kind of classic little sort of skirt. Um, and I didn't have time to look up a specific uh, pattern for this, but I was thinking you could just make a kind of simple sort of, it would obviously depend on what size you were making, if you get your bodices side by side. Um, but just like a kind of simple sort of like a sleeveless shift dress or like a kind of pinafore dress that you could wear like a long sleeve top under. I think that would be really nice as well. Um, my my, my go-to to try and find a dress like that would probably be to go to the fold line and look for dresses. Um, okay, the next one was fabric for the Thread Theory Kamas blouse. So this is just like a cute little blouse, but you make it out of jersey fabric. So you need something that is pretty lightweight. Um, it suggests... Um, bamboo jerseys and, and I've also brought a tensile jersey over as well so this one here is a bamboo jersey and um, it's 68 bamboo and 28% cotton it's the sea spray colorway and um, and it's really nice and lightweight it's got a nice amount of drape as well really lovely and soft and then the other one that I've got which is even more drapey um, and floppy which I think sort of suits that style. I don't think you want a jersey that's too structured for that blouse. This one's the tensile jersey and it comes, they both come in lots of colors. And um, this is the ochre tensile medal jersey fabric. And yet it feels lovely. It's very, very soft and luxurious and very nice. Um, okay, the next one was fabric for autumn lander pants, please. So I would probably say the cord would be nice again, that chunky cord that I showed before. And then, yeah, that that um, stretch velvet stripe denim as well would be nice to maybe just like a little bit more caution on the fitting situation there because that does have stretch. Um, so you might just have to take your side seams and centre back seam in a little bit more. Um, the next one was what jersey or knit fabric is best for dresses to retain tension after sitting down? Generally, you want something with elastane in it. The higher the elastane content, the more like recoil or like bounce it's going to have because it's the elastane that's making it stretch and then kind of ping back again. Um, so, but usually Ponte Roma is pretty good for that. But generally speaking, like if it's got a, like a decent amount of elastane in it, maybe like five to eight percent, then it should recoil pretty well. Um, this bolt is very heavy, but I'll try and lift it up to show you. It is, it's a classic black Ponte Roma fabric. It's got 6% elastane, so it's 69 viscose and 25% polyamide. It's basically just like a plain plain black Ponte. The, the camera's gonna go weird again, isn't it? Um, and it's got, you know, it's got quite a lot of structure. It's stretchy, but it does have a lot of recovery as well. Um, okay, the next one was suggestions for fabric for the Ver Veronica Vest waistcoat. It recommends wool sitting. So the best thing that I've got at the moment is the, the bamboo blended fabric. I feel like I get this out every live because it's so good for lots of different things. It's lovely and smart. We do, it comes in lots of other colours. This is actually a new colourway. It's the chambray blue blended 12 fabric and it's 49 bamboo, 49 recycled polyester and 2% spandex. But you just treat it as a woven. It's just got a little bit of stretch in it. Um, but we do have wool suitings really nice ex-designer wool suitings coming on the website this week as well. So if you can hold on for that, then there'll be even more choice. And then the last one here, and then I'm gonna catch up with the questions and comments you've been leaving me. Pattern suggestions for a 10 year old girl using the Marl knit fabric. Um, I was actually, I should have brought brought this one over, what one I thought it was. I was presuming it was the, the viscose blended knit fabric. I'm wondering if now I've maybe got the wrong end of the fabric question there. Um, but my suggestions were a couple of brindle and twig patterns because they do patterns for big kids, which go from age six to 14 years. 
So they've got, it's actually a free pattern. They've got a hoodie, which I think would be nice. And then they do also have a t-shirt dress, which is quite A-line, but I think you could probably take it in a little bit if you didn't want it as quite as A-line. I think that would be nice too. Um, okay, so let's see, where did I get to before? I've got some of the coral mesh fabric on the way to me. I'm hoping to make a top with it. What would you recommend with the Remy Raglan with short sleeve work? Um, yeah, I do think it would work. I was actually going to make that one and then in the end I made the Helen's Closet Gilbert, uh, no, Helen's Closet Ashton top. Um, but the Remy Raglan was another one that I was thinking about using it for. I have a fitting book. It has QR codes so I can watch videos if I can't work out how it works. Oh, that sounds good. I love the plum, plum ditzy flowers. How much is it a meter? Um, 16.80 for that one. Um, some more issues with the sound. I'm sorry, everyone. A Carnaby dress would be good in wool. Yeah, that's a Nina Lee one, the Carnaby dress. Um, I love the Carnaby dress. Love that navy cord. I know it's really nice. Any recommendations for a pull-up easy trousers for Ponte? Mm, I'd need to look into that one for next week. If you send me a direct message, I'll add it to my list for next week. I would love to make my first winter coat, but I'm finding it quite scary. Any pattern ideas for a first-time coat? and any tips or tricks to make it less scary. Um, what What is it you're scared about? And I'll try and think of something. Um, the Silver at Jessie Coatigan. Okay, so that's the suggestion for a good one, for your first one. The Claire Coat has really good sew along and written tips too. Yeah, and also the, we did the Claire Coat as a kit a few years ago too. So there's got top tips video for that as well. The the grain line Yates coat is also pretty simple as well. Um, I think that one's I think that one's actually easier than the clear to make. To be honest, um, I think I found it more straightforward. But then the clear coat does have raglan sleeves, and they're generally like easier to sew. Um, if you're using wool fabrics, definitely make sure you've got a clapper as well for pressing the seams because it makes the finish in the coat much better. And um, any more green teddy fabric coming in. Um, yeah, we will do. I don't think we need to put in another order for, for that supplier, but yeah, we should be able to get more in. So if you can if you can go to the listing on the website and, and put your email address in for a stock notification, then that really helps us too. Um, I've just seen some Friday Pattern Company, Saguaro, Friday Pattern Company, Joan Trousers for Ponte. Okay, lovely, thank you. Style Art Ponte Pants are lovely. Nova Coat is a good one and it has a tutorial. The Oslo Coat, uh, Sagro and Ponte and they're lovely. Nova Coat is a good first one. Does tensile slash medal drape like viscose jersey? It does indeed, yes. I bought the burgundy lightweight wool. Can I can I put on a wool cycle? Do you think the Pietra pants or Miller trousers would work best? I think probably either. Um, the burgundy, I'm trying to think what one the burgundy lightweight wool is. If it's got quite a quite a dense weave, then you should you should be okay. It will shrink on the first wash, and um, as long as you put it on a wool set cold wool cycle, easy trouser trouser pattern for Ponty is style arc Beth pattern. It's brilliant. Um, sorry if I missed it. Have you got Thelma quilting coming again this year? Yeah, it's coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, so one thing that I didn't do. Uh, yeah, somebody's asking now about the sewing society clue. I kind of forgot in the midst of all that sound business in the beginning and have to stop the live and starting it again. I forgot to give you the Sewing Society clues. So thank you for holding on if you've been waiting for those clues. So yeah, it's just a couple of days until the next kits come out. And the, the, the theme is definitely like very warm with these ones. One of them is a more simple make, but the fabric has probably got like a different dimension to it that might make it a bit more interesting or like a little bit more challenging to sew. Of course, I'll be there with you every step of the way in the top tips video. And then the other one's definitely like a more involved make, which is why we're kind of doing it this end of the autumn winter season. Um, because there's quite a lot like involved in it, different parts, different fabrics. Yeah, there's quite a lot. So so yeah, one's definitely like a kind of bigger project. But but yeah, I would say it's like it's bigger more in the sense that there's just like a lot of sewing. Like the individual construction bits are not that complicated. It's just like a lot of it. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that you like those clothes. 
Um, will you get a blue shade in the Teddy fabric, please? Um, I don't think it comes in a blue shade, but I can check. Um, wowzers, I love the fabric of your shirt. Thank you. It's like an embroidered sort of denim fabric. Um, okay, so, well, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, if you've got any last burning questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will love you and leave you until next week. Um, but I hope that you enjoy the kits when they come out on Wednesday. Um, ha ha, I think a coat of some sort. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Um, the 12 Days of Christmas Liberty fabric. Would it be okay to make a Tilly in the Buttons lot of dress? Yeah, I think it would be. Um, thank you, Lauren. Have a lovely week, everybody. Thank you for answering all of our questions. No props. Um, okay, so... So yeah, I'll see you again next week. Make sure you signed up to the newsletter for the release at midday on Wednesday. Remember, if you don't get it, just tell us. Um, if you're expecting it and it doesn't come at midday, just send us an email and we can manually forward it to you so that you can see it um, at the time. Um, but yeah, hopefully all fine. Off to the stitching show on Saturday. Yeah, I know. I hope everybody who's going to that lovely time. Um, we are not going this year. Um, but yeah, I hope you have a nice time if you're going to that. Um, thank you for all your thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And I will see you next week. <laughs> Bye.